Pardon Our Laughter by Reading in Solitude The dark, stuffy room of the psychologist's office subdued me. It was much like the medicine that they put you on. None of it really makes anything better. Sure, it might make you feel better. Some of the pills can even really make you feel quite good. Like the scent coming from the diffuser in the corner of the room. It smells good. Most medicine, though, just makes you feel empty, like a hollow shell of yourself. It chokes you just like the scent does in an enclosed room. And yet, you have to take that medicine because when you stop, you wind up here. Well, actually, you wind up upstairs in the mental ward, but nonetheless here at the hospital. It's a miserable place. I sit before my doctor as she looks over my papers. I feel almost like she's trying to break me. Again and again she looks at the papers and then at me. The papers and then at me. I stare at the papers on her desk and begin to read them to myself. Seven, nine, zero, one, I say to myself as I read them. The doctor sets her papers down on top of the one that I'm reading and looks up at me. Tell me, Sawyer, how are you feeling about your mother's passing? She asks as she takes her pen to the clipboard. I look down and think about what to say. There's always a chance that if I answer incorrectly, I'll get sent upstairs. There's always a chance that I might cause them to change my medicine, for the better or the worse. But I know, deep down inside, that there is never a chance that they will ever help me get better. I don't really care, to be quite honest. You don't care that your mother's dead, she asks. Her brows furrow and she begins to write. Wrong answer. It was a lie though. I actually did care. But I just don't feel like I care. You know, they say schizophrenia causes what is known as a blunted affect. It causes many other things too, but through the use of antipsychotics, many of the positive symptoms can be treated. But there isn't anything that they can do for the negative symptoms the things you lose. There isn't much that they can do for my incongruent affect, for my strange thoughts, my inability to understand normal people. It doesn't look like I care to others, and as a result, it doesn't really look like I care to myself. So I feel like I don't care. You have me on so many different medications, I, I can't help but not care, I tell her. Have you been taking them on time correctly? She asks, still looking at the clipboard. I don't answer. I haven't taken them in over a week. Not in the last couple of days, I lie. And why is that? She asks. She looks up to me. Because, Dr. Janeth, I lost them. Again? She asks sternly. Yes, ma'am. The truth was that feeling like I wasn't able to feel made me angry, and in a fit of rage I flushed my pills down the toilet. Very well then, I'll write you another prescription, but if you lose these ones, I can't get you any more, not for a while, she says as she looks down and writes onto the paper before handing it to me. 400 milligrams. That's fine, I say to her, not bothering to look up. Sawyer, you know what happens when you don't take your medication, she states nodding upwards. As I looked at her, I could almost see a grin on her face, as if she felt happy in the idea of me being locked up. <laughs> you know something? You look rather beautiful when you smile that way, I say to her. I can't help but laugh at saying this. It's hardly a funny thing, but... I almost fall out of my chair. I'm not smiling, Mr. Arbright. It was a joke, miss. She cuts me off sternly. Doctor. At which point I stop laughing. I look at her and say, It was a joke, Dr. Janeth.